Right, okay guys, welcome to another uh, sort of video game magazine read thing. Um, this video, I'm taking a look at Mega, sorry, Amiga format, I should say. Now, this magazine originally came out as a Atari ST oblique Commodore Amiga uh, format, and then after a few issues, they decided that both kind of computers were uh, popular enough to have their own version, so they split, and you got Atari ST, or ST format, as it was called, and Amiga had its own one called Amiga format. Um, I did buy it back in the day, um, I mean, you know, you tried to buy as many magazines as you could because, you know, there was no internet or anything, so this was your only form of information. I've got to say, even back then, I was never a big fan of this magazine, but I bought it because that was all that was out there. Um, I always found it to be quite a dry kind of magazine, you know. It wasn't, I mean, to be fair to the magazine, it was never sold as a gaming magazine. It was, you know, it covered everything from business software to hardware to tutorials, and it also included games. And I bought it because it had games in it, um, but, you know, it was never the most kind of exciting magazine compared to other ones. So, um, this is issue 13, released in August 1990. Um, <clears throat> excuse me. You know what, I'm just thinking, this was 1990, I didn't actually have, I sold my Amiga um, and I didn't actually have any computer for about six months. So I probably never actually looked at this particular, uh, I was going to say episode, this particular edition. So what have we got here, we've got Cadavar, uh, much like a kind a night lorry type game by the Bitmap Brothers. Gasp at the wonders of ProDraw 2. Grapple with the best in programming languages. Scream with delight at the arrival of Amos. And swoon in amazement at all new games. No cover disc, yeah. Oh, Alright, so yeah, they stick giving away cover discs at that point. That was part of the reason I actually bought it because, yeah, you sometimes, you know, you got various utilities, but you'd also kind of get. Uh, gaming demos as well and that's pretty much why most people bought these magazines. Before I kind of jump into the meat and bones of the magazine guys, I just want to give a, a special mention and thanks to my mate uh, Mark Stoneham. He actually composed the music that you can hear in the background of this. Um, I think it's absolutely excellent. So anyway, listen, thanks very much Mark. But what I'll do is I'm going to put a link to where you can download it. Uh, I did actually ask Mark and he says that people are free to use it, so uh, wire in. If you do use it, please ensure you give Mark the credit for it. So anyway guys, let's jump in and see if this magazine is pish or not. Right, okay, kicking things off in this issue is an advert from Ocean. Um, we've got here Shadow Warriors. Uh, Shadow Warriors is one of these kind of lesser known sort of beat-em-ups. Um, I've played it, I think, in name. It's not bad, but you know what? It was, that came out when, you know, there were just so many video games, um, you know, when only the very, very best ones kind of stood out. Was that Sly Spy Secret Agent? Don't remember that game at all. The Hit Coin Up game? Never even heard it. Never played it. I even, who again, I remember seeing the adverts for it, but never played it. Lost Patrol, that was some sort of. Uh, Vietnam War game, I think. Yeah, again, I think I had it. Don't remember actually playing it. F29 Retali. You know what? I always loved the idea of flight simulators. I would love to be able to play them. They looked super exciting, but I just didn't have the patience. There were so many types of video games, like adventure games, and you know that I just I liked the idea of, but I simply could not get into it. I remember that got really good. Well, there you go. It got 90, there it's down there, Ocean's first flight sim is the best, 97% zapped, gave it bloody hell. Um, it looked amazing, I'm sure if I remember rightly it was really bugged. I might be thinking a different game, I'm sure Zap would have told us if that had been the case. Um, well again it's possible that we had a pre-release a pre copy, I don't know, but like I said I always liked the idea of flight simulators but I simply never imagined. So what have we got content wise? Uh, movie drone. Da, ba, da, ba, da, ba, da, ba, da. Let's see. Screenplay. Kickoff 2, Clax, 3D Tennis, Grid Runner, Ghosts and Goblins. Interesting. Right, who have we got? Editorial wise, Bob Wade was the editor. 
Um, Andy Smith, let's see if I know any of these guys. Um, Paul Morgan, uh, Dave Jones, I don't recognise anyone else. Um, no, Bob Wade, of course, he was uh, one of the Zap 64. Reviewers, <clears throat> Amos. Um, yeah, you could create your own games, and again, I was far too stupid to actually be able to use these things, so I never actually did. Um, I tell a lie, the only game I actually did, or it's not a game, the only utility where I actually did create something was Bob, Gat was it Gary? Gary Kitchens. Uh, games Maker by Activision Software on the Commodore 64, I did actually make a kind of demo thing. I was too thick to make a game, but I made this sort of demo thing, but I've never ever used any of these things. I never even used the, uh, is it the shoot 'em up construction kit for, uh, that came out from Sensible, Sensible Sofa. So yeah, Amos, that was a games creating thing. When is an Amiga not an Amiga? When it's a CD TV. It was one of the biggest, uh, I think it was probably slightly less of a flop than the CD32. Now I've never actually seen one of these, you know what, I would actually quite like to own one. Um, I'm not going to go and buy one because I'm trying to uh, I'm trying to cut back on my stuff instead of buy more shite, but yeah, it was basically, it, um, Commodore decided to jump on the CD bandwagon. Multimedia, was it full, FMV, full motion video, it was like the buzzword of the early 90s, uh, and this was Commodore's effort. Um, it had a few games, um, it was effectively an Amiga 500, um, yeah, with a, a CD built into it, <laughs> but I know it was a, a big, big flop, there's not many games that are really uh, worth getting. Festival of Animation, that is obviously Margaret Thatcher, I think. The final battle, in the beginning there was a sword, then came the adventure. I never actually played that. I thought that was Alan Sugar, who's that? Oh, that's Nolan, bloody hell actually, that's Nolan Bushnell. Yeah, of course. This will change forever the way we communicate, learn and entertain, all at an affordable price. Who did you know? If that's not William Shatner, I don't know who that's supposed to be. What game is Sierra Online, Iceman. I'm not playing these ones at all. Okay, bridging the gap, LCL are expanding the range of educational software to cover all ages. Who actually bought educational software? I think we all like that. As parents, we probably like the idea that our kids could get educational software, but nobody ever did. Oh, what's this? Coming attractions. Like, let's see if I can spot the game. Is that Weltris? Is it? I can't remember. Well, that looks like Kenny Pangy type game. Um, no idea what that is, no idea what that is. In fact, you know what, I don't actually recognise any of these games. There we go. Weltris! Hey, I got one right. <coughs> Metal Masters. No. Can't say I've, uh, I've heard a few of them, never actually played them. <laughs> How dodgy was adverts back in the 90s, seriously. Licence to Kill, Barbarian 2. Four legendary heroes, one blockbusting compilation. Star Wars on the, eight, uh, the 16 bits is actually a very good game because uh, you can use the mouse. Now, I know that the biggest problem with any Star Wars game or the original Star Wars arcade game was uh, the controls because it used the sort of the yoke controller. Playing it with a joystick or any keys or anything else was just rubbish. It had to be a, a sort of analog controller, and the mouse does come pretty good, but it's not as good using the proper thing. Movie Drome. Films and television have long exerted an influence on computer games. Gordon Houghton attempts to divide the, sorry, divine the reasons. Gordon Houghton was the editor of Zap for a long time. Ghostbusters. Was that original? Yeah, that was the original Ghostbusters. I'm not going to sit and read that. Atari ST and Commodore Amiga. Here you go, for 349 of your English pounds, you could get a 520STE power pack with 550 worth of game software. Outrun, Pish. Gauntlet 2, good. R-Type, good. Space Harriet, mm. Super Hang On, good. 16 more games, top games, organizer, business software, including word processor. 
preci a nitea, please. Yeah. <clears throat> So there you go, so that, an Atari ST was 349. Ah, see, there you go, I mean, an Amiga 500 was only 50 quid more. That's not half bad. Now, nobody in their right mind, and, you know, I do expect to get some uh, criticism from ST owners, which I was, um, before I changed to the Amiga, but, you know, nobody in their right, right, uh, nobody in their right mind would buy an Atari ST when you could get an Amiga for an extra 50. <clears throat> now this game here, this was uh, Batman the movie. See this particular section here where you're actually driving, you're driving round in a, a Batmobile. That was an amazing game. It was kind of the closest to like an arcade racing game. It's just amazing. And the thing, the sad thing is, I can't seem to get the game to run on my original Amiga, which is disappointing. I could probably play it. I'll need to actually do a 10-minute waffle off. I think. An Amiga Flight of Fantasy pack. I'm just looking down here, there are 180 pages in this, so I can't talk or dwell on any one page for too much. As I've said before, what amazes me is just how many adverts there were in these magazines. I didn't actually remember it to be so many, but when you kind of go back and revisit them, you're like, bloody hell, there are so many adverts. So it might be 180 pages, you'll probably find more than half of these are actually adverts. There you go for, what was that, Amiga 500 a printer, a monitor, 3849 quid. Bloody hell, how often is that picture? <laughs> there was this infatuation with big muscle bound guys along here, can you Thor, Barbarian, Conan the Barbarian type thing. Mapping the world in the first of a series of special effects and computer graphics, Brian Lackman concentrates on surface texture and mapping. And that's why this magazine was dull, dull, dull. I used to buy it because it was a magazine and they did have obviously game reviews, but I used to completely just gloss over that. This one picture they uh, took in Kamun, that was... It is forever the iconic Amiga picture. I mean... Going from a Commodore 64 or a Spectrum to a computer that could do something like this is just absolutely insane. Yeah, yeah, yeah. See, it's all boring art stuff. I'm sure some people would enjoy this, but for me, nah. It was all about the games. Chess Champion 2175. It's funny how chess games were massive. They were absolutely massive. It was one of the kind of first games that kind of come out on... Uh, and sort of home computers. Epix, what the game is that? Snowstrike. Don't remember that one at all. Accelerators. That's that's not even been spelt right, is it? Accelerators. It should be accelerators. Two hundred and ninety-nine pounds. Never really. Even now, I never really, really, fully get why people want to put accelerators in their Amiga. Yeah, I do understand that it'll allow you to play 3D games like, is it 3D, eh... Uh... Oh, not Alien Storm, what the bloody hell is it called? Alien Breed, yeah, 3D Alien Breed, and there's like, there's a kind of Doom type game as well. Yeah, I understand that accelerator boards will allow these games to play better. But the thing is, 99% of games were written for a bog standard Commodore Amiga, so you don't need it to be accelerated. I guess it's nice to have, but I've never really got, you know, why you'd want to pay hundreds and hundreds of pounds just for that. I mean, I've seen that, I've got an accelerator board, but mine was only like 60 quid, and it comes to extra memory as well, I've got like 64 million memory, so. Emily Hughes Soccer. Actually, still, it's very sad when you think. He died many, many years ago. I actually liked him. I actually liked him. I used to like him in uh, Question of Sport. He always came across as very, very nice. This game on the Commodore Amiga was brilliant. Absolutely fantastic football game. Screenplay. So this is basically all the, the game section. Here we go. What was this kickoff to? I loved the original kickoff. It wasn't quite so fun to kick off to. See, when you try and play it now, it is like trying to play uh, it's like pinball. It's like, it's like a pinball football game, the ball is so hard to control. Um, I think even now though, there are actually kickoff 
World Championships. People actually still play the game. It was a good game, but for Dino Dini, who wrote the game, sadly, uh, Sensible Software came along and released Sensible Soccer. And to me, the minute Sensible Soccer came uh, came in came into being a thing, I just stopped playing Kickoff. And yeah, I did play Kickoff quite a lot until it came along. But... Clax. It's a game I've played a few times. I'm not a massive, massive uh, sort of puzzle fan. $14.99, see that's quite affordable. We always think that every game is 40 quid, but that's not the case. Dynasty Warriors. Again, I've never played it. <clears throat> at least this magazine, <coughs> excuse me, has got colour. Again, you look at some of it, when you revisit some of the older sort of magazines, like there's zaps and that, it's amazing just how much black and white there actually was. The Last Ninja. International 3D Tennis. Never played it on the uh, Amiga. Um, never played it on the Commodore 64, actually. The only 3D tennis game I played was Advantage Tennis. Which I used to quite like. How does it actually go? It's 79%. I mean, this came, this was originally released on the Commodore 64, and... You know, when you think about how sort of inept the C64 was at doing 3D, the fact that they even attempted a game. Got a bizarre game to go from like Whizball to a 3D sensible sort of 3D tennis game. Quite strange. Projectile, I don't remember that one at all. What did it get? 90%? It was obviously quite a good game, supposedly. The Plague. Snakes and Bats Attack. Again, never don't remember that game at all. There's just so much software. I mean, 61%, not so good, guys. Ark, reach for the power. Power of time and space. What the hell is this? Imperium. See, I would look at that. Black and white, no thanks. 86%. Yeah, you know, there's. it kind of looks like a kind of Sim City type thing, but no for me, I'm afraid. Rourke's Drift, yeah, again, one of these kind of war games. I think it was kind of like a real-time war game. And again, it wasn't a type of game that I really, really played, 62%. Good film, though, Zulu. Zulu's thousands of them. The power of the Pyramids, Pyramax. This was almost a failed uh, Dizzy clone. What is the character in there? Turrican, that's a good game. <coughs> played the second one quite a lot, never played the first one. Let's see, what did I get? 80%? Yeah. The music certainly in the second one is amazing. So, yeah, there we go, there's more. Uh, more, let's call it hardware sellers. Heroes Quest, ah, yeah, Sierra Online there, they did all these kind of pointy, clicky type adventures. The only one that I did play a wee bit was Leisure Suit Larry, and that's because it, it was naughty and it had like, bare boobs and that kind of stuff. Um, <laughs> and then there was Police Quest, which was... It was tame by today's standards, but it was quite violent, you know, well, at least we thought it was when, back in 1988. Um, no, and a game I never ever played was uh, Monkey Island. Never ever really played it. And yet people talk about it as the best, one of the best Commodore 64 games. Quick key joysticks. Yeah, don't recall any of these ones at all. The joysticks were such a big thing, spectrum video. Time Soldier. Electro coin 24 million. Ghosts and Goblins. You know what? I never, considering how I did play Ghosts and Goblins once, I think, in an arcade, and I really enjoyed it. I don't think I ever actually had this on the Amiga. I don't know why. Because, well, 80%, I have played it, and it's actually pretty good. It's, you know, it's not actually perfect, but it's pretty damn good. Everton FC Intelligentsia. Yeah, back then, there was every football team worth their salt in their own computer game. And most of them <coughs> were completely fish. Manhunter 2, Sierra Online. When I read these magazines, what I generally do is I would just go right to the bottom, look at the score and go, shite, and I wouldn't even bother reading that, because I never really thought there would be any point in looking at a game and it was crap. I know not every game that got a bad review was particularly bad, but Defenders of the Earth, 
58%. I just, I simply would not buy a game that only was only getting that kind of review. Life and Death. I think I remember playing that. I'm sure I did. Yeah. Again, it's not something you ever really get now. Chess Champion. Oh, that's the one we looked at earlier on. What does it get? 77%. <clears throat> Again, Megaland, where's that about? Let's see where, that, where is that beast about? Is it going to dress? Southampton, Millbrook Road, East Southampton. Go pro soccer. When you purchase any 10 titles, any 10 titles? Any 10 titles? What? The one you. Right, hang on, you purchase any 10 titles, each from the following selection. So they want you to buy 10 games. Bloody hell, it's a hundred quid. You get a free mouse mark. Bloody hell, that makes it all worthwhile then, doesn't it? Fire and brimstone. Hmm, again, I don't remember. That is really, really pretty looking. Look at it. That is really nice. It looks kind of like a bit like Ghosting Goblins. 81%. Again, I don't remember. I don't remember playing this. There's a lot of games that I just that seem to have kind of bypassed me completely. And of course you had all the action replay cartridges and you could save games and you know. I did have a cracking one for the Commodore 64 called Freeze Frame, which basically allowed you to save any game and save it to disc. Which was wonderful. Pro Sampler. Now that was one of the first things that we got. Me and my mate bought one when we got the Atari ST, we bought this sound sampler. And to be able to put your own voice into your computer and play it back was just like mind blowing. Absolutely mind blowing. <clears throat> and then you soon got bored. There was only so many, uh, <laughs> so many things you could do with it. And then it became just something that you never actually use. So yeah, there was always these bits of hardware and whatnot. I mean, there you go. There's an advert. I mean, advert. Let's have a look. Advert. 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 You know what I mean? It's just non-stop advert. Fire and Forget. Oh, absolutely, you need to do a, a look at some of these games. Titus Software, they had, uh, oh wait a minute, it was Fire and Forget. I didn't actually realise that Fire and Forget was an arcade game. A fabulous adaptation of that arcade game. I mean, you know, look at the graphics. You're like, wow, that looks awesome. And then you play it and you find out it. Games Workshop. Yeah, so I used to kind of just gloss over all this stuff. Whoa, that ankle. He's not going to have to get that strapped up. That looks like deck or is it ant? I can't, I can't remember what one it is with a large forehead. That is that is a bad injury to his ankle. Oof. Fish. PD update. I remember the old juggler. That's the female version. That was one of the iconic things in the Amiga as well. Again, yeah, look, advert, 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 just constant adverts. I never, I really, really never realised just how many adverts there actually were. 16-bit software, now, ironically, or not ironically, interestingly, they then went on to become a publishing company, making games like Alien Breed and Arcade Pro, which is a great game. Install adverts. Cadavar. Cadavar, it was, yeah, it looked amazing. It was the Bitmap Brothers who could do no wrong back then. I mean, they made some amazing, amazing games. Um, Cadavar, in my opinion, wasn't one of them. I just couldn't really, couldn't really get on with it at all. Again, it was kind of, I mean, it was kind of like a night lorry game for the Amiga. But again, I was never really into these games. Loads of public domain, all that kind of stuff. Who's that girl? XXX. We all know what that is, guys. A lot of, even now looking at this, go, oh, this is so bloody dull. I mean, seriously, what is all this shit? I mean, to be fair, you know. Ah! <laughs> Box has just commented in one of my videos. Um, I'm just going to pop up in this video. <laughs> um. <clears throat> Aye, anyway, yeah, you look at this, it's just like dull, but you know what, people, uh, this magazine was kind of out there for everybody, it was for 
games people, it was for people who were into hardware, it was for business software, it kind of was sort of one stop shop. Special Reserve, that was one of these computer clubs that you could pay so much money and I think you got, you got games cheaper, but you had to pay a membership. I'm sure Dave Perry actually, you know, the games animal, he is, uh, that's, he started off, he started off working for them. Dowling Computers, Tyne Road, Sandy, where's Sandy about? That's a guy's name, that's not a place. Hunting Tigers, yeah, there was this, there was so much that I wasn't interested in at all. So I used to kind of, I could pretty much get through the Liga format pretty quickly. Is that Darth Vader or what? Gotox. US Gold game? Don't even remember, I'm guessing. It was uh, an arcade game of some sort. Don't remember it. The big two, an incredible way to buy this month's top titles. Ugh, Rainbow Islands, I hate you. I don't hate it, I've just got no interest in playing it. No interest at all. I don't know what it is about it. Maybe if I actually played it, I would actually enjoy it. And to be fair, the home versions of that game are absolutely stonking, even though I don't like the game. Black Tiger. Cabal. So what's that? So, so I want you to take advantage of this remarkable way of buying software. So you can get and buy one, get one free. That's not a bad deal actually. Unreal best arcade game on the Amiga, says Ubisoft. Best arcade game on the Amiga, well I haven't even heard of it. I've heard of Unreal on the PC. Five different types of interactive music along with incredible sound effects such as the rushing waters of a river. <laughs> See that's the thing, now we just take for granted having real sound. But back then, um, back then it was, you know, it was something that was, that was amazing. <clears throat> so pump up the music. <clears throat> And stuff, faster livery, nah, 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 mind your language. Yeah, I mean, like I say, I always, I always, always bought this magazine, even though oh, it was pretty dull. The Mega 500 PC XT is here from professional MS DOS software on your Amiga. It's not something. I, I, I guess some businesses would probably, would probably want to do that. Probably buy this magazine because it was, like I said, it was for everybody. Discount software, word processing databases, blah 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 blah. But I'm gonna kind of skip through this because we've kind of passed the interesting stuff. <laughs> Tricks with coppers. Here's your chance to find out a bit about multicolor background shading. Woohoo! Not for me. I know it's. I know some people have been interested in certainly programmers, but I was way too thick. Only pools and horses, oh very good, I see what you've done there lads. Again, these kind of programs that uh, would pick horses or pick lottery numbers, they were massively popular back in the early days of computers and people actually believed that they would actually work. There's another comment on my Friday Waffle which I put up a wee while ago here One Stop Shop. Yeah, I mean, I wonder, it's interesting to actually count just how many adverts are actually made. You can see there, it's all business software, there's no point in doing for colour, so it's just all black and white. The whole truth about games program. Menace! I, I recognise that, that was a Psygnosis game. Again, yeah, just Adverse Central. Down to Earth Prices, blah 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 blah. How hideous is that? Bloody hell! Has he just been run over and had his legs uh, severed? Horrible. <laughs> Public apology! MD Office Supplies would like to take this opportunity of apologising to all of its competitors. Our mad summer sale will be offering discs, storage boxes, etc. at unbelievable, unrepeatable, mad, mad prices. Yeah. Public apology. Popular demand, we present a 
to guide. So the, the twelfth, the first twelve issues of the year four. Uh, uh, just all oh, black and white software adverts. I mean, look, it's just I would say virtually it's almost all adverts. Yeah, I can't. I really can't be reading any of this, and that's why I just glossed over it. There we go, it's an internal disc Amiga music system for £99. Of course, we all know that if you wanted to uh, really get into music, then you were obviously better off having an Atari ST because it came with a built-in uh, MIDI interface, which means you can plug, plug a keyboard straight into it and fire up some software. Game Busters, ah, here we go. The summer months are upon us. Pop festivals are coming, the sea is calling, and that weather is far too nice to ignore. Champion football made that tie break again. No, it was ocean. But I mean the, the software industry was just a wash with football games and most of them were absolute shite as well. Philips X3 8833 monitor, I've got one of them actually, 239 quid. Actually really good monitors. If you get one that's in good working order. Yeah, more adverts, 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 adverts. Stunt Car Racer, here's some tips on coping with various tracks. Stunt Car Racer is a classic. And I've got to say, that is one game that does benefit. Um, it does benefit from having an accelerator because it just plays that bit better. Same with uh, Formula One, the Jeff Cramming game. It plays a bit quicker and a bit smoother. So, you know, I do understand why people buy accelerator cards, but. Four hundred pound. I mean, the, the original ones go for silly money. Eve Sham Micros. God, they were going. They've been going for years. I just bought my freeze frame cartridge. I think from uh, yeah, from a Commodore sixty four. Really, you know, I never really realised. And of course, there was all these stupid, the hottest game secrets. Games line, only 38 pence per minute. Seriously, but they must have made that. They must have made an absolute fortune on these things. Mel Croucher, computer fun line. A new event every week. Did people actually phone these? I'm sure they must have been else. They wouldn't have adverts. Right, let's see if we know anybody that's sent in a letter. That was one thing I never actually done was sending letters. There is something totally baffling me. Has anyone else noticed that in the advert for Pine Mania Amiga Format issue 10, page 51, there is an Amiga Format Gold Award being displayed when in fact the game only received 81% in the review in the previous issue? Is this a spot of dishonesty in the part of Empire? I wonder, hmm. It certainly isn't down to any dishonesty in anyone's part. There was a misunderstanding between ourselves and Empire that led to them using the logo on their advert. Pipe Mania didn't get a format gold award. But it is a very good game. Why is my friend's drive light yellow and all other people I know have green lights? Says Ben Bashford of Greenwich, London. Mad as a balloon, says Mr. Carol Drinkwater from Stretford. I'm writing this with my foot as the people in the institution won't let me take the straight jacket off. Rotters. You never hear that word, rotters. <laughs> That's a word that you just, yep, you never ever hear. You hear rotten, but rotters, you never hear that. Firstly, I would like to say what a brilliant game Blood Money is. After the year I finally completed it the other day, they still have urges to have another go. Well done, Dave Jones. He went on to work on Grand Theft Auto, I believe. Now I would like to thank Sam Cadbury, Amiga Format 11, for his tips on using my funny kettle. I followed him closely and had a steaming cup of tea in no time. I think the anti-static wristbands made all the difference. Blah, 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 blah. Yep. Roger Musson of Edinburgh. And we're back on to more adverts. More letters. Let's read one more letter. Let's read Gavin Dixon of Melrose in Scotland. In response to a question raised by Sam Cadby in issue 11 of Amiga Format, 
I decided to work out how much electricity my Amiga used on average per hour. The search for the answer to this took me to the underside of my Amiga power supply. Here I found moulded into plastic input. 240 volts, 50 hertz, 60 W. That watts I think. So from this I deduced an Amiga uses 60 watts of electricity an hour. However, the cost of your monitor or TV also has to be taken into account. There's not many people run their Amigas without a TV or monitor, you know. My 14 inch colour TV, 14 inch colour TV has a rating of 54 watts, making my total power consumption 140 watts per hour. At this rating, I can run my Amiga and TV for 8 hours, 46 minutes and 19 seconds on one unit of Scotch Power's electricity. This costs less than running two 60 watt light bulbs for the same amount of time. What would you rather have? Two light bulbs for an Amiga, sorry, or an Amiga and monitor? I know what I would prefer, says Gavin Dixon of Melrose in Scotland. Excuse me, and one final advert from <coughs> another football game. Italian 90. I, mean, I think I remember that. I don't remember playing it right enough. Digiview 4096 colours and resolution. Oh, and we appear to have got to the end of the magazine. So anyway, guys, that is uh, Amiga format. I've got to say, even back in the day, I wasn't a huge fan of it. I did buy it because it was, you know, we had no such thing as the internet, so we basically magazines were the only thing we could use to kind of, you know, to uh, to get our kind of gaming fix. Um, but you know, revisiting Amiga format, yeah, for me personally, it's quite a dull read. You know, I bought it for the for the games, um, but it was primarily adverts and businessy type stuff. So anyway, guys, listen. Uh, if there's a particular magazine you want to, excuse me, you want to see me read, um, then please put your comments below. And as always guys, thank you very much for watching.